in my uh, most recent video, I upgraded my iMac and put a Xeon CPU in it, along with a Kepler-based K2100M and flashed the GPU in order to give it boot screens and brightness controls. Uh, I didn't cover that process in depth because I have covered it in prior videos, but I wanted to come back and revisit it because I used a new method, which just required simple putting of files onto a USB stick in order to uh, flash this GPU. So in this video, I'm just gonna come back to this simpler process for flashing the GPU uh, and do a more in-depth walkthrough of the steps that require. It still requires a little bit of Linux usage, but it should be within reason. There's only two, three commands that you'll have to run in total. So it should make it great for even a novice to this um, experience. You don't have to partition your main drive. You don't have to install Linux uh, on your own machine, right? This can be done for an iMac that has no drives in it. And in fact, that's probably the best way to do it. No drives installed, screen not even on, right? <laughs> you plug in the USB stick and you flash the GPU. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Cover quickly the easiest method that I've found to flash the graphics card, so the Kepler-based or uh, AMD-based graphics card for the 2011 iMac. Um, this is a process that I recently used to flash my K2100 with an updated uh, ROM file. Now we're gonna start with the 2011 I, uh, iMac GPU upgrade thread. You can find this by searching Google or go directly to Mac Rumors and find it there. The first post has been updated to be really informative. Uh, you can actually sort of see the list of supported cards, but down here, keep scrolling, keep scrolling all the way down to uh, Q&A section. There we go, okay, flashing the vBIOS. Now I could also just search this thread, uh, Command F uh, for vBIOS to find this. There is a super useful post here by user um, Xanderon that is a USB stick method for basically, you don't have to partition your main disk, you don't have to you know, install Windows and a bunch of additional software before starting the, you know, the GPU upgrade. This could be done on a separate machine, create this disk, this USB drive, right? Put it into your Mac and it will boot up right into Linux uh, and has all the flashing tools already baked into it. So it's a very easy method. Uh, I love this. Now, what you want to do first, download the files here. The second link, I don't know if this one actually will work, but either way, this second link will work. You download the package. I actually have it here already on my desktop and I have expanded it. And all you're going to do is actually copy this directly over to your USB stick. But the first step is you have to format your USB stick correctly. So two things on USB sticks and these uh, iMacs. You'll want to test um, <laughs> You want to test to see if your Mac can actually see it when it's going to boot, right? Some USB sticks do not work. If you have a couple different brands, I would say use two or three um, if for some reason one doesn't work. Uh, I've got some that just do not show up on boot uh, for my iMac and others that work perfectly fine. The exact same process, everything starts to finish, some just don't start, uh, show up. Um, now, once you have one that you know will work, you're gonna go ahead and jump in and flash that, or not flash it, uh, sorry, format it in the correct method. It is covered here, GPT FAT32. And this is important you get both of these right, otherwise you'll get weird errors, but you won't be able to see those errors if you're following this process of trying to flash a GPU, because on boot, before you flash the vBIOS, you won't get the boot screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, I'm gonna select FAT, but then I can't, you know, just leave this Apple partition. Uh, you gotta have GP. So it says GPT here. What that means is uh, GUID uh, partition map. So uh, GUID partition. I'm going to go ahead and select to erase this disk. Now I have also done the view show all options so that I can see everything that's connected to my machine, every single partition, etc. All of this structure. Uh, that usually means a higher success rate for <laughs> selecting the correct uh, disk. Okay, things worked. If for any reason you don't have something work, try unmounting, unmounting, make sure you have view, show all devices, select it so that you can see everything. So now that the disk is uh, set up, I can actually open up that zip file that I downloaded and just take all of the files within it and copy it over to the USB stick. It's about 300 megabytes, 334 megabytes, and that'll take very little time to get copied over. So now what I'm going to have is this USB stick with all the proper files on it, I'm gonna plug it into my iMac. Now, it, it, when I actually did this, I had the screen off, and that means I couldn't see anything. Uh, and I just replaced the GPU, 
And I actually disconnected the hard drive and the SATA SSD drive. So I disconnected both of my drives. Now, when the iMac goes to boot up, the only option it has is the USB stick. So it'll just automatically default to that. You don't have to press anything. You don't have to hold down an option. Basically, it's, it's a foolproof method. If your screen's off already, just leave it off. Make sure that your system is plugged into Ethernet because it's not going to have Wi-Fi. Uh, plugged into Ethernet on boot with the USB stick in. That's its only option. It's going to load that USB stick. Now, since I've already done this process, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show basically what it looks like from the uh, option menu on startup. So I'll go over to my machine now with this USB stick, put it in, and I'll show what's happening behind the scenes. Essentially, it just loads up, and then, I, then I'll come back to this Mac that I'm currently on, and we'll SSH in and flash the GPU. So I'll sort of show what that process is like, because the, the key thing here is the working directory. All right. So now that this is going to be done, I'll go ahead and I'll plug it into my iMac. We'll jump over there and then we'll come back to finish up the process. So I've got the USB stick ready to rock. Now I'm just going to go ahead and simply place it into the machine, restart it, and I'll show what happens behind the scenes. Now, when you're doing this, chime, you won't even want to hold option. You'll have your disks disconnected. You'll have the screen off. You won't see anything but it'll just automatically boot into the USB stick. Since I've already gone through this process and my disk is installed, you'll see it tries to default to my primary hard drive. But if I was to remove that, the only option is to automatically boot into Linux. And you'll watch it here. It'll boot automatically in 20 seconds. So this is what would be happening basically behind the scenes with your screen off. I'm gonna go ahead and just default that boot and give you an idea. So 20 seconds plus the initial loading, right? So we're probably already at a minute or so for just having it default this process into uh, loading Linux. And then you can see it's pulling all the files here. And remember to plug in your network card because the Wi-Fi will not be initialized. All right, so we're in. You can now SSH in. And you can see the default password here as well. The default password is listed within the Mac Rumors form thread. It is Flash. So we can actually go back to my other Mac and now SSH into this machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Finish the process. So I'm back on my uh, secondary Mac. And I need to find the IP address of that other iMac. I'm just going to pretend I can't see the screen. I can't type any commands to find out which IP it actually got. So uh, I need to get into my router in my house. Most routers use 192.168.1.1. Now, uh, if you have a Mac or an Apple-based router, those are like a 10, 10 one, one. Either way, search Google for your router brand, and then what the uh, default IP range is, is that it's going to be using. I've got my uh, username and password. Sometimes that's actually on the router, so on a sticker on the back if you've never changed it. I would recommend changing it once you do log in to something that uh, only you know. Otherwise, you'll get hacked, to say the least. So I'm now in my uh, router, right? So a uh, Netgear Orbi. And each one's a little bit different. Uh, for my machine or my router, it's called Attached Devices. And this just gives me a list of every single computer or cell phone or uh, other routers attached within my household. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking through for the Linux-based machines and trying to find my iMac here. Now, since I know it is on a wired connection, I can look for wired in my case, right? Because the Orbi router tells me if it's wired or not. But here's the thing, Grimmel. Oops, I clicked on it. Let me unclick so that we can just sort of see this real quick. The Linux distribution that's being used, um, and I'm not sure exactly what it stands for, GRML. Um, that is the one that I'm looking for. You can see it's an Apple device, GRML, and here's my IP address. And that's what I'm looking for here, 192.168.114. And then remember, the password is flash. Let's go back to the thread here and see what the user's name is. The username is root. Okay, so that's really all we got to do. My uh, iMac here, go ahead and pop it open. I'm going to log into that iMac. So I'm going to go ahead and do SSH root at 192.168.1.14. You should actually see this message. You just type yes. And flash is the password. 
Very cool. So I'm going to clear this out. Okay. So the commands, I'll of course uh, link to this thread here. You basically, once again, just find your IP, SSH root at the IP address, password is flash, and now I'm in. So all I have to do is actually go to the working directory where NV flash is, which is included on the USB stick. And if I type in ls, that means list all the files here. There we go. Okay, so they've already in this USB stick, uh, Xandrin's done a great job here of setting it up so that this is executable. And it also has the Kepler beta files, Quadro beta, AMD beta, basically all of those ROMs fairly well updated. You know what? Um, it might still be prudent to grab the most recent updates, but I actually used the one from this particular USB stick on my K2100. I don't think that one's been updated recently. I know that the K4100 has uh, later ROM files you can get within this uh, overarching thread. So just note that you may want to have uh, those files updated on this USB stick before doing what I'm doing now, which is putting it into the iMac. Remember, you can update the files within this folder, drag it over to your, your USB stick, and it will be here as well. So what I did is I sort of checked the different files here. So you can change directory into the Kepler beta, and you can actually see all the different files listed out here. So Kepler is going to have the 765, etc. Change directory, but go back one level. List out the files again. I believe I used the Quadro beta. There we are, cool. So we know now that the file is in the Quadro beta folder for the K2100M. And then using my past documentation on how to actually flash these uh, drives, uh, let's see, 2011 iMac, I've got my document out there. I'll put this into the description of this uh, video as well. And I'll go ahead and I'll update uh, the uh, documentation here as well. So where's my NV command? Line boot into Linux. There it is. So it's the dash six. So here is the command. I should just highlight this right now that I use to flash my K610. Uh, It'll be slightly different in this particular scenario. It'll be basically telling it to go into the directory here. So it would be more along the lines of nv flash dash six. Oh, I'm already in the Quadro beta folder. Okay, so let's back out. All right, so nv flash Linux dash six. And then I'll type in Quadro beta two k2100. Let's expand this out. Go ahead and copy this command in. I don't want to run this again because I already did it. <laughs> there we are. And there you are. The documentation is now updated. If you are using the USB or the standard USB stick. There we go. All right, so this is an example for the K2100M. You're now in it, you're flashing, you hit enter, you say yes, 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 sign your life away and hope that everything works, which it does. Um, then you can go ahead and uh, disconnect this USB stick and reboot your machine. And you should see now the boot menu on startup. So you can hold down option and see it. Cool, so that's it. So it's a fairly straightforward process to go ahead and use this USB stick to actually boot your iMac right into Linux and then have all the files available in a simple directory uh, where you can flash it. You know, big props there to Xandrin for getting this all set up and running and making it way, way easier, uh, even for a machine that doesn't have a disk in it, to flash a uh, NVIDIA video card, as well as the, the uh, AMD cards. I haven't used one of those yet. Soon, maybe, soon. Um, either way, that's all for this video. I will continue to update that document and link it in the description as well. Subscribe, like, all that kind of other fun stuff because uh, supposedly that helps something. Either way, I do this more because it's entertaining to me. All right, everybody. Have a good one. See you in the next.